space, the final frontier. In 1966, Star Trek's crew traveled to places where no man has gone before. Even though space is only 100 kilometers away from every person on Earth, closer than two neighboring European capitals, its limits are still unknown. Russia and the US sent astronauts into space in 1961, but back then the technology people witnessed on TV was the stuff of science fiction. Now much of it is reality. 50 years ago, space was only accessible to the most powerful nations, a tool for the Cold War. But over the past decade or two, countries and private sector participants have begun their own space journeys. Recently, Turkey has also unveiled a wide-ranging national space program. Global space economy is now worth $420 billion and Morgan Stanley predicts that it will be a $1.1 trillion economy by 2040. Satellite services currently take the biggest share of this economy, adding countless usages of space into our daily lives. From tracking illegal fishing to the internet you're currently using to watch this video, from maps to the climate change control, satellites are crucial. Some people say that before exploring the space we should fix our problems here on Earth. But if those people can leave their mobile phones for two hours only, then we can discuss this again. We are using space in every field of our lives. The satellite magic happens in the low Earth orbit, LEO. But how about exploring beyond the Earth's orbit and starting a life on other planets? Well, there's only one thing standing between that and the humans. Money, money, money. For example, right now it can cost up to $43,000 to send a bottle of water to space. No wonder then that it's the world's two richest men who are racing their rockets to the top of the commercial space race. When Elon Musk founded SpaceX in 2002, his goal was to make affordable rockets. And now he's highly confident that he's going to land people on Mars by 2026. I believe we have the technology to make life possible on Mars. The problem is money. It's very expensive to do such things. Currently, Musk is generating income by launching satellites into low orbit, providing transport to and from the International Space Station and through Starlink, which provides broadband internet directly from the satellite. There are other means to make money off space too, like near-Earth asteroid mining, which is forecasted to be a multi-trillion dollar industry. Meanwhile, space tourism is expected to generate $850 billion by 2030. In fact, one of the first space hotels is expected to be functional by 2027. Not to mention space flight. Leonardo DiCaprio and Justin Bieber are among those who already have tickets worth $250,000 for a commercial space flight. Oh, and there's space debris removal, which is another way revenue can be created in space. Countless satellites are orbiting the Earth and floating through space. In time, their batteries either lose power and they become zombie satellites or they collide with each other and create space debris. Right now, only 40% of around 6,000 satellites are functional. And there are startups which are focusing on cleaning up space and getting rid of those non-functional satellites and pieces of scrap. One small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. But are private companies investing in space to make money or to make the world a better place? It will be naive to think that these companies are interesting only in favor of the future of the world or humanity. There is high competition in the industry and these big players are racing with each other's technology to make more gains for themselves. Let's see what kind of advancements this competition will bring. Maybe it's still beyond our imagination. Or maybe we'll be lucky enough to grow old and live on Mars one day. Live long and prosper. <laughs>